So the journey with the Core i7-920 continues. I got the uh, Foxconn Blood Rage motherboard quite a while ago and uh, I really wanted to give it a proper try someday with a proper overclocking uh, Bloomfield CPU. So the Core, so the uh, Foxconn Blood Rage was really built from the ground up for uh, uh, extreme overclocking with the uh, Bloomfield C CPUs, especially the uh, original Core i7 Extreme CPUs, the 965 and the 975, which are the uh, best CPUs in the whole uh, Bloomfield family. The uh, blood rates was never used for the best scores when it comes to Gulf Town overclocking, as uh, Foxconn as a company kind of left the uh, consumer high-end market around those days. So uh, this, this board is really only built for Bloomfield overclocking and for the uh, 45 nanometer CPUs in general. So, uh, but it's really good. I only gave it a try on ambient and it really seems good in terms of memory overclocking as this is the only board with a single slot per, cha single slot per channel design. So uh, I really wanted to give it a go. With the uh, 920 that I used for all the uh, top scores I just made, uh, made recently and I, which I showed on my YouTube video. So maybe the only minus about this board is that the VRM is a little bit behind from the uh, Asus Rampage 3 Black Edition, but it is still very, very good. This, uh, this board only has a single 8-pin connector instead of two on the uh, Rampage 3 Black Edition, but I, I'm absolutely sure that that is not a problem. So uh, the 920 doesn't draw that much power in general, although this particular chip that I ran seems to uh, draw a bit more power than 920 CPUs in general. But uh, as we have seen with uh, newer CPU generations, even the uh, ASRock Z170M OC formula, that board only has single AP, single AP pin connector and it can run the uh, six core CPUs without any issue and even the uh, eight core 9900K to uh, best speed best speeds possible, although it loses to many uh, proper models like the Z390 Dark and um, Asus Maximus 11 Apex or Gene in the end when it comes to proper LM2 overclocking, but it's still like capable of running the CPU uh, most to the most part. So uh, I'm, sure the, I'm sure the blood rate is totally fine for uh, the best possible Bloomfield CPUs and even Golf Town, although it doesn't, it's not that good with Golf, uh, Golf Town compared to uh, X58A OC or the Rampage Free Black Edition or Rampage Free Extreme. But I want, I wanted to give it, a, I wanted to give it a try with the 920 now when I have it over here. So we will, we will be trying that later. But so the just out of the box, the uh, blood rates, blood rates isn't that good at all for uh, extreme overclocking with the Bloomfield CPUs. So uh, by default, the uh, PCI Express overclocking is very, very limited on the blood rage due to uh, bad configuration in the X58, in the X58 uh, chipset. So uh, without any modification, you can only do like plus and minus three megahertz for the PCI Express in the bars. So like 3% increment at best. And uh, as I already showed you in my 920 records video, if you want to reach the best possible uh, base clock speeds with these CPUs, you have to increase the PCI Express speed to at least like 120 something and preferably even uh, up to 130 and beyond that. So uh, we need to do a modification near the X58 chipset to uh, change the uh, PCI Express configuration inside the X58 chipset from LCPLL to, to SPPLL. You can find all this information from the X58 datasheet, which you can find online. So uh, SPPLL allows much more range on the uh, PCI Express, but it has more jitter, pretty much. So uh, we have to do that. So the uh, modification is quite simple in the end. We just have to change the location of one particular resistor to another. So we just have to move it from one place to another, that's it. So uh, we will do that on this video. And uh, I thought about making a, like a proper legendary motherboards video after my potential tests. 
so that I have at least some proper personal experience about extreme overclocking this, with this particular motherboard before I tell about anything else about this board. But in, overall the board is definitely good, so it has many features that many boards did not have back then, which are common on proper or the highest end motherboards of today. So uh, now, without further ado, we will get to uh, modding the motherboard. So the uh, modding area resides just next to the X58 chipset. So the X58 chipset is the north bridge on these motherboards. So it resides under underneath this uh, water block here. And the uh, south bridge chipset uh, resides over here, which is the ICH9R. Uh, or ICH10R, sorry. So the ICH9R is the uh, south bridge chipset of the X48 boards, which are 775 socket. And ICH10R is the south bridge chipset of X58 boards as well as P45 boards of 775 socket. And it resides over here. So in the uh, newest buffer boards of today, there's no north bridge anymore. So there's just the CPU and the uh, chipset. For example, Z390 chipset, and it resides at the same spot where the uh, common Southbridge, Southbridge chipset used to reside when they still existed. So, in order to access the modding area, we have to remove the original heatsink assembly of this board so that we can uh, desolder the resistor and solder it to the other uh, spot. So, uh, in order to get, in order to remove the uh, heatsink assembly of this uh, board, we have to uh, unscrew these uh, particular screws over here from the front side of the board. So the particular screws reside on the front side of this board, front on the front side of the board on this particular motherboard. So uh, we can easily just unscrew them like this. Yeah, a big. A bit too many screws to my liking so but now they are all removed so the heatsink assembly should come off quite easily yeah and that's how it looks like when the heatsink assembly is removed so we can see that the heatsink assembly is attached to the MOSFETs by a thermal pad and uh, by a thermal paste to the uh, X58 chipset and to the Southbridge chipset. And that's how the board looks like when it's totally naked. So the particular modding area is just over here. So uh, at the bottom right corner of the X58 chipset. So uh, the way we will do this is that I will use my hot air solder, uh, soldering station to uh, remove the particular resistor and then I will just use normal soldering iron to uh, reattach it to the other spot. So I will uh, change the position of the camera for this purpose so that I have the best access to the uh, modding area. So the particular resistor that we have to mod is the uh, third one over here, so calculated from here. So it's this particular resistor here that we have to desolder and resolder over here to this empty spot. So uh, I just double checked it with a multimeter and it's a 100 ohm sized uh, resistor. So if the worst possible scenario happened that we happened to lose it, we could just find a replacement very, very easily as this is a very common sized resistor. So now we can see that the resistor came off quite easy with the hot air, so it really really works well. So uh, you can see the uh, spot is now empty, I have the uh, resistor on my table, I have to be very careful that I don't lose it because it's very very small. So uh, I'm sure it will be much easier to just re-solder it to this spot with a normal iron. So uh, if you are wondering what kind of soldering station or iron I'm using, I'm using a very cheap Chinese I'm not which I'm not fully sure which brand this is but this is the 852d plus two-in-one soldering station so this has both uh, hot air and uh, normal soldering iron I think the iron is 80 watts output but it's enough for the most part 
as this is mo mostly a hobby I don't want to spend too much money on soldering soldering equipment so this does the job just fine for the most part e even for very simple uh, e-power mods so uh, now I'll get on and uh, resolder the uh, resistor to the other spot so I'm a bit sorry if the picture isn't that clear because it's not so easy to film a very small object or target area like this so I have pretty much zoomed the camera to the max but uh, you should be able to get the idea anyways so now we will uh, create small solder bumps to the uh, target spot where we will uh, resolder the resistor so over here so it's very easy to do with a normal iron I'm not just sure that this uh, particular solder iron tip will be the best for this case but I'll try I'll see if it's see how it goes yeah, let's see now So yeah, now it's there somewhat okay. It's not the best because yeah, the angle is not good for me. So So now it's pretty much attached. It doesn't look that flat like it used to be, but it should be good enough anyways. yeah well should not matter so it's definitely there now I can just double check it with a multimeter and if the uh, contact is good then uh, it's pretty much good to go and that is pretty much it so sorry for the relatively bad picture quality and my shaking hands as I have never soldered anything on camera before and uh, my hands often shake quite a lot when doing something very accurate and spot-on work like this as the uh, spot where to resolder the resistor is very very small so uh, it's quite hard to get it there uh, uh, without uh, soldering something uh, unwanted that could short something and uh, I don't want to lose the component as it's very very small and it could slip and bounce from the uh, tweezers and uh, get lost easily but yeah so here's how the end result looks like through a 10x loop so uh, it looks all right but it doesn't look it doesn't like sit there in 100% same alignment as how it was before by default but uh, I double checked it and it has exactly the same resistance as before so 100 ohms it should be uh, okay enough so uh, from here I will just reassemble the heatsink assembly on the board and I will test the board with a bad CPU first see that if see that uh, everything works and uh, I can now overclock the uh, PCI Express and uh, if everything is okay then I will do an LN2 session later on with this board and the uh, Golden 920 that I already uh, benched and see if I can get any better results with the Blood Rage uh, I might even try to uh, put a RAM pot on the memory as well and give some cold to the memory as last option if I can get at least the same uh, CPU speed on the blood rates as I did on the Rampage Free Black Edition, and uh, I will see if I can get any if I can get any better results and how the blood rates compares to the uh, Rampage Free Black Edition. And after the uh, potential LM2 session, I will then make a, like a conclusion video about the blood rates when I have real first-hand experience with the board. So. Uh, that's pretty much it. So if you happen to own this uh, very rare and interesting muffler board from X58 Days, then drop a comment down below and like and share this video once again if you liked it and subscribe to my channel. And uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.